Hello, good morning. I hope that you're all well and that you've had a good week. I'm actually recording this video very, very early on Saturday morning. Myself and the boys, we had a very early start today. At the crack of dawn, we were actually out on the coast path walking to Lou Pool. We saw the fishermen come out of the uh, little harbour um, at Port Leven to attend to their lobster pots. That's how early we were, weren't we? I had to wake the boys up. They were in the land of Nod, snoring away, and I said, walkies, and well, I've never seen you wake up so quickly. The reason for the early start is that um, there's a very important golf competition running all day at the golf club and Sue of Minnie McBeans and myself, we have been roped in by our husbands to help out. Sue and I are going to be handing out pasties to the players uh, so they've got sustenance as they're going around the course. Um, they're beautiful Cornish pasties made at a local farm uh, just off the Halford River. They're delicious. I wonder if Sue and I would be tempted to have one. There's a lot of calories in Cornish pasties. Um, on the table today, I've got lots of bristols and um, I thought it'd be nice to show the bristols because there is a stitch along starting um, on social media being run by Judy Hall. Now, Judy uh, has started the Pinkanel Sisters, which is this magnificent Bristol. Bertie, do you want to be in the video? Do you want to be the star of the video? <laughs> You're always the star, baby. Um, and here is uh, um, Clara and Maud Pinkanel. And it's the hope and love Bristol. I love those two sentiments hope and love, so precious. This is a magnificent Bristol. It's a big Bristol, but in a stitch along, you have lots of encouragement um, to work your way through the sampler. Personally, I find Bristol samplers very therapeutic to work on. I really enjoy stitching um, the alphabets and the Bristols, the alphabets have such beautiful fonts to them. And then when you drop down to the um, borders patterns, I love the mental challenge of finding the path uh, to work them in the most economical way. This is Harriet Salt. Um, Harriet Salt is a stunning Bristol sampler. It, she really is magnificent. But again, this is a very big Bristol. They look magnificent on the wall together. Now, the first Bristol that Hands Across the Sea samplers reproduced was Louisa Collimore. And here she is. She is not as big as the other samplers. This one, um, if you're not into very big samplers, is probably a good Bristol uh, to take on. Delightful. I think that when you stitch Bristols, you can set yourself uh, goals for each stitching session. And it's, it's really good when you set yourself a goal and you achieve it. The fourth Bristol I'm going to show you is Mary Hillier. Very, very pretty sampler. Very elegant sampler, this one. I think this little girl uh, was a very feminine little girl because this has so many elegant touches to it. This cartouche is very, very beautiful. Gorgeous sampler. Um, we do have a fifth Bristol in our collection, but I don't have a model of that sampler. But I'm going to pop a picture in. Um, Mary 395, again, is a stunning Bristol sampler. The Bristols, they have so much presence on your sampler walls. Um, OK, so what else do I want to talk about? Well... I've been going great guns. Oh, sorry.
sorry, Bertie. I'm sorry, baby boy. I've been going great guns on Jessie's sampler. Here it is. The colours are amazing on the black swan uh, linen. And it's very, um, not peculiar, this is what happens with colour. As I have been adding colour to this fabric, the fabric has appeared greyer. Um, when there was no uh, colour on the fabric, it looked um, like a very sort of mellow black. I've been having fun um, adding um, as many of the colours as I can. I believe now I have added all the colours that are in this sampler. Um, it's gorgeous. This is where I am at the moment. I'm working my way up now. Um, but I've also, I haven't put this area in here. I've been jumping around, but having fun doing so. And I'm really enjoying stitching on this fabric. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's really hard to stitch on black fabric, but it's taking on a project with a positive mindset. I know I can see the holes on this linen and I wasn't going to psych myself out by um, comments I'd seen about stitching on black fabric. You need good light. That's very, very important. Um, these are all the colours in the sampler so far. Aren't those beautiful? Gorgeous, gorgeous colours. Like these are the faded colours from the front of the sampler. Um, the back of the sampler is, my gosh, you need your sunglasses <laughs> to look at. But um, there we are. Really beautiful um, palette of colours. There's singing on that fabric. Um, okay, so what else do I want to talk about? Well, Emmeline Purnell. This week, Acorns and Threads started shipping the kits around the world and the booklets for the US. And I've started shipping um, the booklets for people who live outside of the US. Um, I've um, shipped out two batches of booklets and this weekend I will be shipping a third batch of booklets. You can only ship so many a day. There's only so much time in the day. So I'm sorry they're not all coming out on the same day, but the volume is too great. Now, Emmeline is a limited edition release and is she's only available whilst supplies last. And, um, you know, if you want to stitch Emmeline or have a booklet, now is the time to order her. Um, when she's gone, she's gone. This um, central motif is absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful. Um, I'm giving great thought to stitching that centre motif for the top of um, a wooden item that I have, an antique wooden item. Um, I've just got to do some calculations to see um, if the size will work, but that is just so beautiful. It would make a beautiful pin cushion or, you know, an insert um, into a project bag. Beautiful, beautiful sampler. Um, the model was stitched on um, just the ticket from uh, Tabby Cat Linen. And that fabric is really showcasing those beautiful, delicate colours in the border. And those scrumptious greens. Green is an amazing colour. And I think it's a colour that we take for granted. Every day when I take the boys out walking and I look around me, green is the predominant colour that you see. And as I'm walking and I'm looking at the um, flora, the shades of green, they are countless. Beautiful colour, colour I can't wear, unfortunately, but um, it's a colour that I do like. Um, Right, so talking of colour, this week 
I posted a sneak peek of a project that Lisa is working on. Um, Lisa has reproduced the sampler and has started to stitch it. And the sampler is full of amazing colours. And from the moment we saw this sampler, um, the colours reminded us of Skittles. Um, so this week, when we posted the sneak peek, Lisa couldn't resist adding some Skittles um, to the photograph. Um, but please don't worry, those Skittles are not sitting on the lily. There is a clear film of plastic separating the Skittles uh, from the lily. We would never do that. The dye can so easily come off the Skittles and go on to the linen. It's a beautiful sampler. Um, this sampler will be available for, or in, I should say, 2026. We have to work so far ahead. Um, I know that it's probably very frustrating when you see a sampler being stitched uh, or a model being stitched and you want to stitch it. Um, everything takes time and there is a process. A lot of planning goes into uh, the release of samplers. Um, okay, so what else happened um, this week? Well, um, yesterday, I spent uh, a little time in my sewing room and do you know what, it's so lovely now that I can actually get into my sewing room. Now all the boxes of uh, supplies for Hands Across the Sea samplers has been moved out. Um, it's just lovely just being able to, right, you want to do something, right, okay, let's go and do it. Open the door of the sewing studio and everything is there ready to start. Um, I'm not going to show you any pictures of my sewing room at the moment. Um, in the new year, the builders are coming in and they are uh, knocking out the ensuite on that room and then I'm having it um, totally refurbished. And on that subject, I would love to hear from other needle workers what you think is important to have in a sewing room, a craft studio. Um, I've been looking at some of the um, cabinets that are available for storing supplies. Uh, at the moment, my idea is to have a carpenter come in and fit some bespoke shelving on the walls. Um, but I'd be very interested if you have any recommendations for craft storage. Anyway, let's get back to what I was starting to talk about. What I did yesterday afternoon was add this band. Let me just take these scissors out a minute and you can see it uh, better. Let's put those down there. Oh. All my scissors have protection. I practice safe stitching. So I added this band to uh, the top of um, this scissor display. It's really pretty. I'm very, very pleased with how that looks. Just a little simple embe embellishment, but it just adds that little extra to the scissor stand. Now this scissor stand is from Danielle Craft Store on Etsy. Now Danielle's uh, store is actually closed at the moment. I presume that she's um, on a vacation. Um, in it, uh, it, Danielle is in Italy and I think Italy has been having a lot of hot weather and um, I think a lot of Italians have gone to the beach. There we are. My mother's Italian and um, as children, when we went over to Italy to, for mum to see her family, in the month of August, everybody went to the, um, the beach. <laughs> so hot in Italy in the summer. Um, okay, now there's something on here I want to show you. One moment. Let's just put those back. And I'm just going to show you these two pairs of scissors. 
And what I'm going to show you are the fobs. This is um, a beautiful fob by Minnie McBeans. The uh, image on the carbuchon has been taken from Multiply Kindness and these are available from directly from uh, Sue of Mini McBeans and they're bespoke made. You have different options um, with the image and the colour of your charms and if you email a Sue at Mini McBeans you can discuss having one made for you. So pretty. Oh it's not that one I want to talk about. Oh, it's here. That's why it's not on this scissor stand. It's on this one. I chose these kahanas to use on this project because these handles match this colour I'm using so beautifully. Now, on this pair of scissors, I have what I feel is one of the most beautiful fobs that Sue of Mini McBeans has made. Now they're all beautiful, but there was just something about this one that just wowed me. So that's the image. And this is the, uh, all the charms. It is so, so beautiful. And Sue has popped uh, two crystals on this one to make it extra special and the crystals are picking up that beautiful um, lavender in this gosh it's so it's going to be a sunny day today gorgeous and these charms reflect the flowers in the carbuchon now these um, fobs um, are available at Hobby House, but they're not on Hobby House's website. Um, these are something that the attendees of the Great British Sampling Weekend comes to America, um, which is being held at Hobby House in October. Um, these scissor fobs will be going on sale that weekend. And um, what you can do if you are interested in acquiring one of these is email uh, Kathy at Hobby House Needleworks and ask to pre-order them. These are being made specially for that weekend. Um, the attendees of the weekend have all been given the opportunity to pre-order. Um, so if, if you're not attending, but you would still like one, um, you can contact um, Kathy at Hobby House. Oh, but it's just so, so pretty. Really, really is. Okay, um, talking of um, <sighs> pretties. Um, somebody the other week referred to pretties as necessities. And do you know what? They are necessities. I've got to have them. <laughs> They're only small things, um, but they are wonderful little treats and I get so much pleasure from them. Um, when I showed... Um, my blue case when I was using it with uh, these little uh, scissor pulls. These are my initials. Now, these aren't available to commercially buy. Um, a friend gifted me um, two sets of um, charms with my initials on and I asked Sue if she would add zipper pull, uh, you know, these little clasps to them so I could use them for my needlework. These are actually intended for um, a charm bracelet, but they look so pretty. And do you know what, it's, <laughs> when you go to a retreat or a workshop, so many people have the same case and it's really quite important to identify your case so that you know that it is yours and the same with your scissors as well. Now, although these aren't commercially available, these are and these are um, available at Hobby House Needleworks. Minnie McBeans uh, has a series of um, carbuchons with initials in with different um, charms on. So if you go to uh, the Hobby House website, search on Mini McBeans, uh, towards the bottom of the listings, you will see 
the bespoke initials and you can order a set of your initials and there's different options for the charms. This one is um, a locket and a key, a heart shaped locket. Nice bit of bling on that one. There we are. Those, oh, that font actually comes from uh, some of the alphabets on um, Harriet Salt Sampler. So um, that's actually my stitching <laughs> in that caboot, those cabochons. And these are a gift for a friend that um, I've got, I've purchased. And these are going off to my friend um, in a little um, box of goodies. I receive so many gifts from needle workers from all around the world that um, it's nice to be able to send out a gift uh, back. <laughs> so there we are. Um, okay, so what else have I got to talk about? Well, I'd just like to talk about Bertie. The week before um, I was doing my nightly check on the dogs. I always, when they come in uh, from their last visit to the garden at night, when they come in, they have some treats. And I always take that opportunity to run my hands over their body, checking for anything. Um, and we have a lot of ticks around this area. And I always want to make sure that the dogs don't have anything like that on them. And I think it was... Um, the Wednesday or the Thursday evening of the week before, and I felt something on Bertie. And um, when I examined it, I could see that he had a growth. Now, we've lost two dogs through um, cancers and tumours. Boxes are very prone to tumours. Um, so, um, sleepless night, phoned the vet the next morning and our vets used to be owned by uh, two uh, old vets, you know, they'd worked as vets as all their lives and they were amazing. They had so much knowledge because they had so much experience. But when they retired, our vets were sold out to a big national company and um, they developed an animal hospital um, in Falmouth um, in place of the vet surgery. And at this animal hospital, they have lots of newly qualified vets and they're all wonderful and they're all really nice to deal with, but you can't beat years of experience. So to see um, one of the most experienced vets there, we had to wait until Wednesday for our appointment. Well, by the time Wednesday, Okay, Ray and I were going out of our minds. Every time we've taken a boxer to the vet with a suspected tumour, we've always received the worst news. But we received wonderful news with Bertie. It's not a tumour, it's hyperplastic tissue. And what that means, or how the vet explained it to me, was that when you get pressure points on dogs, um, the pressure on that area can push the hair follicles back into the flesh and little cysts form and they get hard um, lumps which come through the skin um, and that's what Bertie has. Um, it's a little unsightly and it will grow some more over time but it's not cancerous. So that was just the most wonderful news. Um, and by the time Wednesday morning came, I was really uh, beyond myself. And I would just like to thank everybody on social media who um, supported me that day and for all the prayers for Bertie. Um, they were very, very much appreciated. Okay, do I have anything else to talk about? Probably, and I've forgotten. Just remember, with Emmeline Purnell. Oh, I do know what I have to talk about. Okay, um, last year, um, Hands Across the Sea Samplers issued a calendar. And the reason I did the calendar last year was because I did it as a gift 
for attendees of a particular workshop and I had a surplus amount and I put those up for sale and they just went and I was literally receiving hundreds of emails asking uh, for that calendar. Well, I couldn't do it at the end of um, last year, another print run. So what we've done this year is um, we've put our 2025 wall calendar up for pre-order. Now, I can't show you the calendar because the 2024 one, I actually gave my copy away. So I didn't have one. Such was the demand for that calendar. Um, the calendar this year is A4 size and A4 size is that size. Uh, the calendar features 13 uh, forthcoming samplers that we have reproduced. The third, well, 13 because the front cover is a calendar as well. And the calendar has um, uh, a hanger at the top. It's spiral bound and it hangs. And then you open it up and you display uh, the month and the top section has a sampler and then the bottom section is the actual calendar. The curious thing about calendars, there is a difference between UK calendars and the US. In the UK, calendars run Monday to Sunday, but I was surprised to learn that in the US, calendars run Sunday to Saturday. Now, that means that Saturday and Sunday are at opposite ends. You know, Saturday and Sunday are the weekend they should go together. And the Bible says that Sunday was the seventh day. I would love to know why do US calendars start the week with a Sunday instead of ending the week with a Sunday? Anyway, I'm digressing there. Um, so the calendar for 2025 each month features an, uh, a sampler um, and we've tried to tie the samplers in so they fit the mood of the month. Um, it's available now for pre-order. The calendars will ship by the end of September but I'm really hoping to have shipped them way before then. By putting them up for pre-order everybody who wants them gets one. Um, so uh, if you go to the Hands Across the Sea Samplers website, the calendar is available now to pre-order. Okay, let's go back to Emily. Don't forget that if you want a copy of Emily sampler or a kit, it is available at Acorns and Threads on their website. But when supplies are gone, they are gone. This sampler will not be released again in the future. When you go to uh, Janine of Acorns and Threads website, when you go to check out a booklet only from outside the US, it does show the US postal charges, but those are mod uh, amended when Janine um, processes the order. Um, I will be shipping the booklets for purchases outside of the US for uh, booklet only sales. So don't th think, oh my God, that's expensive shipping because those shipping costs are adjusted when Janine processes the order. Okay, right, Sue so will be here any second and it's off to the golf club. We're going to be on our feet all day. Um, okay, right, until the next time, stay well, stay safe. Bye, bye.